Hello and welcome to the Stateside Soccer Show. My name is Jordan Wiegand, and with me today is a man who is very happy that Orlando has made it in. <laughs> it's Logan Stump. I was really going to be uh, bummed out if, like, my first season watching MLS, <laughs> my team just bows out at the end. Like, oh, we're good. <laughs> we don't want to go. So I will Very say happy. this is going to be a Frankenstein episode here as we are taking <laughs> our East reactions from our live stream yesterday, slotting them into this episode, and then we're going to talk West Conference today separately. So you might see us change clothes if you're watching the. <laughs> the video one, I'm not sure if it'll sound different on the audio one, but just a little heads up in case if anybody has questions about that. All right, um, so let's go ahead and talk. Uh, let's start with the East. Yeah, we got some stoppage time going on here now, but Atlanta, since he's over. Fifth playoff spot for Atlanta. What a run. We were talking about how disappointing they were. I think they made the change at the right time, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably where we stand on that. Montreal game, Orlando should be wrapping up in a few seconds. We got two and a half minutes of Philly and about 40, 20 20 seconds or so of Nashville, Red Bull. Nothing crazy in the witching hour. No, but over the course of the whole day, we did have a lot of places yes. changed. So that was that was better than it could have gone, right? Like mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> it could have been a lot more boring. Uh, yeah. Things really picked up in the second half. The first half, you know, we really had that start with Nashville, and that was it. Yeah. You know, in the second half, we get what like Philly taking the lead, uh, NYCFC drawing red cards we had a couple red cards in game um yeah but dc just missing out on the playoffs unfortunate for them columbus out of the playoffs you know a team that everybody thought was going to run away with the east philly the last team that can do anything right here yeah, they could, they're they could... the last ones that can affect everything. So let's see how it goes. Got a minute. I don't think they're really going to try here to do anything. And the ball is going to be inbounded by NYCFC anyway. Looks like we have our uh, our playoffs, Jordan. Looks like we know what's going to happen. Really is too bad by DC. I mean, just completely fell off Yeah, at the end. If they get one point, they're back into the conversation, and that would actually grab that spot. So that's rough. Rough, rough, rough. It's a way to end that one. From there. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes uh, for them next year. I think it's definitely a building block, right? Uh, yes. That is a huge building block. They were going nowhere fast last year, and uh, Hernan Lasada been really good coach for them this year. If they go out there and actually, you know, you got Kamara back in form. If they can actually go out there and put together uh, some more pieces, they could, Mm -hmm. you know, conceivably be a team in the East. And now we're going to have Nashville leaving the East. It puts another spot up for grabs, right? Because I doubt Charlotte comes in year one and uh, wins or gets in the playoffs. So theoretically, any of these teams, Montreal, Columbus, D.C., that are out on the edge right now, um, could conceivably grab that spot that Nashville is vacating. Hmm. What do you think? I mean, I, I think it's a good shot. Like, I, obviously, Columbus is going to be back with a vengeance next year. Um, get a bunch of their guys healthy. Aiden Morris is one that, that was talked about a lot. Um, they, they've just had a slew of injuries. I mean, none of their defenders were really early or healthy at the same time. Mints have missed a lot of the first part of the year. Um, their midfield had not been as good as they thought. Kevin Molina was not as good as he had been. Um, Zellerayon actually didn't play unworldly like he normally does. So it's it, it it really was a combination of things with them. Zardes has had to miss some time. Um, and, and then they're left at the end of the day just hoping and praying that teams lose. But, again, it's just not a good way to play. And I think that 
you know, you're looking at a Caleb Porter that next year he's really got to turn it on. If they have another subpar year, I think you're looking at a possible shift and change uh, in that situation. But I think D.C. are formidable. I think they've got to add a couple more pieces maybe to kind of add some depth into those positions in the midfield or um, hope that Paul Ariel is uh, staying with them in the long run. I know he's had some spells everywhere. But, um, yeah, I, I like the D.C. shot. I think it's a good one. I think – Again, this league is tough, so it's really hard to kind of predict because um, crazy things yeah, can that's happen. True. That's true. Columbus finished ninth, and everybody had them finishing in the Supporter Shield first spot. Uh, you know, one match into into the season. So, you know, let's know. talk about let's talk about the Eastern Conference playoffs. Are you ready? Yeah. We have New England with a bye on round one. Then we're gonna have New York City FC versus Atlanta, hosted by New York. I'm not sure if that'll be. Yankee Stadium or Red Bull Arena. I'm guessing they'll be able to have it at Yankee Stadium. Uh, Nashville, the three seed versus Orlando. That's in Nashville. They drew there, I think, last time. Mm -hmm. They just played each other there. Uh, And we have Philly versus Red Bulls, the two seed versus the seven seed. So that's going to be a Philadelphia game. Um do we know when these games are or we don't? Um, uh, I, I know <laughs> first round's November 20th, 21st. and Yeah, after. yeah. But I, I guess we don't know when it'll be. I don't think so. Which ones are which? I don't know what you, games are which. Do they try to give – they'll probably try to give the higher seeds a break, a longer break, so I'd imagine that Philly would probably 21st. play that first. Yeah, that first the, weekend. The Sunday. Mm-hmm. That's what I would think. That'd be interesting. Because that way they'd have more games in between when they'd play again. And I could totally see the 4-5 or five happening on the 23rd because then they could have them turn right back around and play New England. That's the way logically it makes sense for me. But uh, I don't think they actually have the games. To no, turn. probably not. So let's let's say uh, we'll have time to preview more of these as we get closer to the twentieth. Um, so we're just going to talk about, um, yeah, we're just going to talk about uh, as it stands now. So New England gets the bye. They're going to have a long time between games because of this uh, international break coming up. We have Nashville versus Orlando, um, New York City FC versus Atlanta, Philly versus New York, Red Bulls. It's going to be. Uh, these are some good matchups. I really like the Union Red Bull matchup because of the um, because of the uh, rivalry. Mm-hmm. And at one point, it was <laughs> Nashville versus Atlanta. I thought that would have been really fun uh, to see a New York City FC versus Orlando as a replay from last year. But mm-hmm. um, alas, it did not happen that way. But I, I wonder, what do you think of Atlanta having to go if they do play at Yankee Stadium? I, I think that might be a little tougher for Atlanta, not having a lot of space on the pitch to kind of play their style. Yeah, I was going to say they, they really rely on that style of playing uh, into Joseph and playing out from the wings and, and attacking from in from the back um, and kind of having those wing back positions where you have Bellow on one side um, running down the side and trying to create. But I, I think – I think you're right. I think there's a cause for concern having to go play in New York City and not playing very well against the Cincinnati team that has been atrocious all season. Um, And really for the first 75 minutes, 70 minutes or so, it actually looked like Cincinnati was going to have, you know, at least hang on to a point, um, if not grab three. So I think that, you know, when you look at Atlanta, I'd be concerned because there's times where they get stymied. And if Joseph doesn't score, then Atlanta's not good. Uh, And, you know, that's, Kind of weird to say it's obvious, I guess, but I think that when he doesn't play well at all, um, this Atlanta team does tend to struggle. And I think that you're starting to see that a little bit more um, now as he starts to wear down. I know he's had a long season where he's coming back from injury from last year um, and playing in the Yankee Stadium <laughs> in that small pitch. I just see uh, New York City's built much better for that. They're both good defensively, but I think that given a home game, you know, playing in the cold, um, I, I think you give the leg up to NYCFC because I think that it's just not an easy place to go in and win a game. And, and especially with the way that they've been playing and Castellanos has been scoring, I just don't know if Atlanta can hold on that long. All right, we got the Revs with the bye. Like I said, they, they are, you know, they win their first supporter shield. They 
be are the best team in MLS history, like we all mm-hmm. predicted at the beginning of the season. Um, <laughs> but uh, so we'll, we'll probably focus more on them as we get to their whoever their opponent is. But their opponent is going to be one of uh, NYCFC or Atlanta. Who would you? I, I I would probably say Atlanta would be a fun matchup with with uh, Rebs. Yeah, I think it'd be fun. I think that New England rolls over anybody, but I think I think if you got into a shootout, it'd be a lot more fun to watch Atlanta play. Uh, I think with with the way that they defend, and I, I think the way that they would open up, because I think New England would attack at every. I mean, they can attack from every different way. I mean, Buxa scores, Bo can score, Heel can score, Buchanan can score. Um, their defenders score, so it's you know Brandon By and those guys. I mean, it, it it really is, and it's fun to watch Matt Turner play anytime you get a chance to do that. I just don't see anybody being deep enough to beat them, but I do think it's weird to say, you know, even with New York City being the fourth seed, I think Atlanta and a shootout would be a lot more fun, just because I want to see what Joseph can do against a really good Revs team. Not a good defensive Revs team, not, not a great. I mean, there's a lot of teams better than New England defensively. So, yeah, then we have. Um... The winner of Nashville, or at least the winner of Philly, New York. So we would probably think what Nashville, Philly, uh, if we're thinking logically yeah. here. But MLS is never yeah. logic, so it might be no. like Red Bulls versus Orlando in the next round. <laughs> yeah, I just Philly looks so good, and Philly's hard to beat at home now. Again, like they're just so difficult to beat at home, and with their defense, I mean they they've got one of the best defenses in the East. I think they're tied for, or they, they're in second place, or just underneath two teams um, in Nashville and in the Red Bulls. So it'll be defensive, and to be honest, that that favors uh, Philly because I think Philly scores better. So um, Philly's got a better attack, consistent attack. I think Red Bull at times are very inconsistent in the attack. Fabio's okay, but once you get past that, it's like okay, well, somebody's got to help us, and where is that going to come from? Yeah, and then. Uh... West Coast. Okay, uh, so looking at the West here, this was a wild finish mm-hmm. to the West here. Um, maybe <laughs> we should have been live during this. I apologize. But we end up with Colorado winning the West. Like, Seattle was running that thing for most of the season. Kansas City mm-hmm. was in second most of the season, and Colorado is going to leapfrog them on the last <laughs> day of the season to win by one point the the top of the Western Conference, their highest point total in history, the first the first time they've ever been first place in the West. Pretty good uh, finish here for Colorado, um, who have like the lowest uh, salary, I think. Yeah, throughout lowest the whole salary. Yep. Yep. So pretty nuts. Uh, so you have Colorado in first, Seattle in second, Kansas City in third, Portland in fourth, and then you have Minnesota, Vancouver, and Salt Lake as Galaxy get knocked out as they play against Minnesota. They draw against Minnesota, and as that's going on, RSL scores a very late goal in the 95th minute to bounce the galaxy out galaxy's been in a playoff spot all season. I thought I was going to be right here because I had them in seventh place. I thought I nailed it. Nope. Galaxy (laughs) do what they do in like the last three straight seasons and have to win on decision day and get bounced out. So, uh, pretty rough for LA galaxy. I, I guess ultimately maybe an improvement from, where they were before Chicharito scoring, you know, a bucket full of goals after only scoring two before a good start for Greg Vanny, maybe to start maybe, you know, building, what do you think building? And then hopefully next season you don't drop this hard, but they were a top three team for a good chunk of the season. Yeah. I think if you go back into our episodes and listen to Logan stump talk, you can talk about how, how good Logan is about predicting where galaxy would end up because they did end up exactly where I thought they would close. Um, I had them in the beginning of the season, what price six or seventh. Yeah. Seventh, sixth, seventh, eighth. I did get it right. You got oh it right. Oh my yeah. gosh. I thought I had him seventh. I didn't even look at it. Oh, I'm seventh. Yeah. Um, but Jordan, you and I talked about this. We said if Chicharito can't figure it out, Galaxy are going to be a lot of trouble. What happened? Chicharito misses a lot of games again, and he's just not being able to perform at the level that he can. 
Um, you see him kind of make a rapid run at the end of the season uh, and start collecting games and getting some goals. Um, even in this match, uh, he had some goals. He chased down the golden boot leaders, even though he had not played as many matches, only got 20 starts and 21 matches played out of the 34 that they played. But um, 17 goals, and he looked phenomenal whenever he played, but uh, that was the story of the season. He missed too many games. They're very reliant upon Chicharito. They need him to score goals, and when they didn't get goals at the end, it, it causes some major concerns, and they've got some major concerns heading into the offseason. Um, Greg Vanny, I think, has this team, like, you, like you're asking, heading in the right direction. I think they've got really good – uh, promising players. I thought that Bond was actually really good in goal. They stood on his head so many times. I think this team actually could have ended up worse without him. Um, I thought that he played extremely well. They've got Kevin Cabral, who played extremely well um, in the season with them. Uh, Samuel Granzier uh, coming over and playing um, his first season in MLS, played well. Victor Vasquez, um, a fine wine and playing extremely well for Greg Vanny after coming over from Toronto. So, Jordan, I mean, it, it it does feel like they're building something, and you were around to watch Greg Vanny build a Toronto team. Does this feel familiar? Um, Sort of. Yeah. Uh, and I say sort of because Toronto had a hell of a time getting into playoffs mm-hmm. uh, before Greg Vanny. And then Greg gets there, you know, I they may have missed another year or so before mm-hmm. he finally gets them in, and they become, you know, at one point a record-setting team and also winning Supporter Shield being the best record ever and winning MLS Cup that season uh, is, yeah, I can kind of see the parallel there a bit. I think it's a little different because the expectations in uh, yeah. in L.A. are a little different. Um, I wonder how our friends at L.A. is our house are doing with this because this was, um, I think you can't take it away as happily as you can any other season. Like we're like the Toronto ones, because Mm -hmm. like we said, galaxy were a top three team for half of the season and then just plummeted in the last two months here. And I think that stings. I think that stings a lot more than if they were an eighth place team the whole time, like LAFC uh, who LAFC have been, you know, not, not always in out of the playoff spot, but they've been uh, out of the playoff spot. I feel like longer than in a playoff spot for LAFC. Right. So I feel like LAFC, while it's disappointing, they're probably like, you know what, whatever we'll, we'll do better next year. LA galaxy. It's almost like a, I worry about the mindset after, you know, not being outside of a spot ever. And then being like, Oh, the last game. Right. Up. And it, it, it's not even like they could do anything about it, really. I mean, Chicharito scores uh, a lot of goals as he comes back from injury. That's probably the biggest thing, that they need somebody there for when Chicharito is out. Or if he is out, or if it's not working, that they can have somebody score goals. Because when he was out, they weren't doing anything. When he comes back, guess what? They're, they're back in the cusp of it, you know? And um, I think they need a plan B. Right. It'll be interesting. They need attacking. Uh, they definitely need to shore up their defense. Uh, if they're going to have any chance next year, they've really got to shore up that defense because it was getting to a point where they just leak goals to um, allow 54. And that was one of probably the bottom half of it, like near the bottom, bottom half of the uh, Western Conference. They're sitting tied with a bunch of teams at 54. And those teams include the list of like San Jose and Houston. So if you know how bad they were defensively, then you can pretty much understand how bad the galaxy are defensively let's talk matchups we got rapids on a bye they'll face the winner of portland minnesota mm-hmm. that's a good matchup i Very like that matchup. matchup portland yeah. minnesota's marquee matchup for mm-hmm. me i think skc versus vancouver is eh, right and seattle versus salt lake is eh. like we did lose with rsl getting in we lost the savory matchup of sounders versus Galaxy. LA Galaxy, which would have been awesome. Yeah. And I really would have liked to see that. Because while RSL snuck in here, I don't know if RSL has anything. I don't see our RSL winning on the list cup. I, I, Galaxy could have conceivably made a push with the way Chicharito had been scoring and such. But I worry about the West Coast usually has some really good matchups. This year, not so much. Yeah. Portland, Minnesota is the matchup. And then you're going to have Colorado versus either Portland or Minnesota. Now, if you have 
you can't you can't lose if Seattle goes through. Seattle goes through, they either face SKC, which is a good matchup, or mm-hmm. it's a Cascadia matchup versus Vancouver. I mean, Vancouver is going to be interesting, though. Like. They're saying they're going to win. Here's a quote from yeah. Vancouver. From Vancouver, we will beat Sporting Kansas City. Yeah. I, I mean, they've looked really good this year. They defended pretty well, and that, that's been kind of shocking. <laughs> like yeah. they've actually played well defensively, and I, and I know that with Vancouver, you, you could be surprised. I think you've got, I mean, a team that's going to come in. Obviously, everybody like, last. right. Everybody coming in on underestimating what they've done. Um, Christian Dahomey has been really good uh, in the 33 matches he's played. He's got 10 goals, uh, four assists. Brian White has come on and been absolutely phenomenal. That's another name that a lot of people have forgotten about um, that actually saw some people interested in maybe throwing some shouts for him with the U.S. men's national team should they get a chance later on in their qualifying to maybe have some games they can just throw some guys in. Um, Because Brian White's 25, Jordan. He's got 12 goals and five assists Mm -hmm. with the Vancouver Whitecaps. Um, coming on late and again but like like you said i mean it, it these guys just find ways and uh, it, with that quote i wouldn't be shocked if they gave um everything and more uh to supporting kansas city like i could totally see it and i think i want to say that daniel shallowy um might have been knocked up uh hurt so it, i don't know if he's got the knock or if that was false reporting on my end. I think he is, but um, he's not a hundred percent heading into this game. Um, it will be at children's mercy, which is one of the toughest places in MLS to play um, as our guys from uh, no other pod could tell us all about, but I don't know. Like you said, it would have been really cool to see LA and <laughs> Seattle going at it. RSL, Demir Krylock's getting a lot of MVP shots because of how good he's been. So Mastrioni or whatever his – what's the coach's name? Is it Mastrioni? Is that how you say that? Uh, for Pablo Mastrioni. Yeah, Pablo yeah. Mastrioni, yeah. Yeah. He's been good. Interim coach, but I think he's going to turn that into oh, a – I coach. remember him as a player. He was on the Rapids. <laughs> I remember him as a player like 10 years ago. Yeah. He played, he's coached them well. So, And they're in a rebrand. Like this was their rebrand year. Remember we talked about this early on where – we didn't think they had a shot in you know what because of the rebrand and how ugly it had gotten. Yeah. Um he was a also he was also the manager for the Rapids at a point where that didn't really work out. So I do wonder how it'll be uh for Mastro Annie. Uh if he but you know he got them into the playoffs. That that might be enough to give him a try next year, right? And see yeah. what happens. So we're really shocked by the Rapids, right? I mean, we talked to Pollard earlier this year, Matt Pollard, and he was talking about how good they were. And we were mentioning that they had a really good team, uh, and we thought that they could really challenge the middle of the pack, um, as you see there. I had them out of the playoffs, yeah. so I, I apologize. They're the ones yeah. seed. <laughs> but we talked about, like we we did, we talked about if they could figure out defensively, and that was their big concern because they have Cole Bassett, they had Kellen Acosta, um, they've got Baji who scored really well and that many people didn't see coming. Um, but they had guys that, that scored. Michael Barrios scores eight goals for him. Jonathan Lewis played well. Diego Rubio had four or five goals to add in. Not extremely good, but good enough. And their defense just ended up being so solid. Um, Jack Price being Jack Price in, in that center defensive mid position and holding really well. Um, Brian Calvin played extremely well this year. Um, I don't know. It was just a, a collective effort for Colorado, and I think that's why you see him first now. Yeah, and uh, so um, any more of these matchups, or do we want to talk some of the other news that had happened? I guess we one last thing, like the Portland and Minnesota game, looking at both brackets, I think that you're right. That might be the premier showdown between Portland and Minnesota. Yeah, that's going to be good. I wish we knew what day these games were, though, at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we we kind of did this morning, and then people got mad and were like, uh, "MLS went and changed it." <laughs> I think that's yeah. What I'm I'm gonna say they thought, oh, they were like, oh, that was a mistake. We didn't mean to do that. I guarantee you, Jordan, that's exactly what they had planned. And then they were like, oh crap, the backlash was not good because now now the games are gone. Because before, when I texted you that, 
that game with Philadelphia was at noon. That game had disappeared, but the game below it at three or whatever, that hadn't moved off the app. That was the Vancouver then, SKC one. Yeah. yeah. And then when I texted you not too long after I got in the shower and then I got out and everything was gone. The only things on there were the international breaks. So that was interesting. I don't think they meant to do that. And I think it was because they thought Philly people were going to get really mad that they were playing at noon. Well, it's not just that, too. It's like I think Philly's the team with the most players on international break. And yeah, they are. then come back right as soon as the international break's over is stupid. But um, it doesn't matter. I'll, you know, whatever day the game is, it's whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, like we talked about, the East is New England by, you know, NYCFC, Atlanta, Nashville, Orlando, Philly, New York. We'll see what that TV schedule is looking like later. The two Saturday games are on um, Unimas and, uh, or Univision and TUDN. I think ABC game is on Sunday Mm -hmm. and uh, some other games on Sunday. Then we have the weird like Tuesday game or whatever. But anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and talk Wondolowski. Has retired. We kind of saw this coming. He mentioned last year he was going to retire, I think, and then, you know, no fans. He decided to come back for one more year. Mm-hmm. 17-year career, all-time MLS leading um, goal scorer. Uh, yeah, leading goal scorer. He also scored against Dallas to have 171 regular season goals alongside 42 assists. 38 years old. What a career from Wondolowski, especially when you look at it and say 17 years. Yeah, but he wasn't even a starter until like 2010 or whatever. Yeah. Like the first five years of his career were like nothing. Right. And then he turns it on in these last like 10 or 11 years and outpaces and outscores Landon Donovan, Jeff Cunningham, Jaime mm-hmm. Moreno, Kai Kamara. Um, so just an insane it was a goal away. And it was a goal away in the U.S. Men's National Team of becoming uh, a legend. I think he was sort. offside there anyway. So yeah, know. we'll pretend he wasn't, Jordan. <laughs> but MLS MVP in 2012, Golden Boot winner in 2010 and 2012, Best 11 in 2010, 2011, and 2012. And, you know, that was a team that um, Quake's team in, like, 2012, I think, won the Supporter Shield. Yeah, 2012, yeah. Um, just – not even talked, talked enough about about how insanely good that team was in, in 2012. Um, they were known as the Goonies back then. Uh, little nickname because uh, they never said die. They were always scoring late goals. It was uh, pretty fun. Pretty fun time watching the Quakes. Um, Can I ask you something? Yeah. Like, I, yeah, because you, you've watched it long enough. Um, I mean. It, it, obviously it's too bad that he didn't play for a better team, but like he really could have been like unbelievably, I, I guess recognized in a way that it's like a uh, world shaking, uh, almost like in the names of Landon Donovan, because I'm not sure like while people know who he is, I, I just being in San Jose, I mean, in the last, what from 2013 down to 2021, here's their finishes 10th, 18th, 13th, 17th, 12th, 23rd, this is league league ranked fifteenth, fifteenth, and twentieth. Like this team struggled to make the playoffs with him, um, struggled to really be relevant at all. Like, do you think that he, if he had played somewhere else, he could have reached some of these heights that like we would all know who Chris Wondolowski is? Because if I say Landon Donovan, much more people in the U.S. are going to know who he is than Chris uh, Wondolowski. I don't think so because. Uh... I think the team fit Wando pretty well, and I yeah. think he, you know, he was scoring goals that whole time. The issue was he wasn't in the playoffs, right? Yeah. Uh, except for like that 2012 run, and maybe 20 a little few years after that. Mm-hmm. But they were never that dangerous in that regard, and I think that kind of changes things a bit because not everybody in America watches MLS anyway. Landon Donovan is more well known for his U.S. men's performances. Yeah. I don't know if Wando was ever going to be good enough to, because he got started so late, yeah, uh, to really make an impact that way. Um, and uh, you know, now if if he got caught into a camp, people would lose their 
darn minds on Twitter. <laughs> what a solid backup he would be, though. Like he would have yeah. been for like the last like five or six, like like he had been uh, when he missed the goal. But like, just think about that. I mean, as a person who now watches the sport and understands the sport, yes, they would have lost their damn mind. But I think he would probably have been the most stable as far as like if you needed a late goal. Let's throw some magic on. I'm glad he made the 2014 World Cup squad mm-hmm. because I feel like he really deserved it after that run of time yeah. that he had. He was the best striker in MLS yeah. from that stretch. And when you look at San Jose Earthquakes Wikipedia page, only one player of theirs has won an MVP award. It's Wando. Yeah. Only two play only one player has won the golden boot, and it's Wando twice with them. Um uh only like three players in uh, only two players in the last 10 years have won uh, made mls best 11 mm. with san jose and it's wando three times and victor bernardez another time like he he really is that franchise and mm. i i do worry about where they go for it you got Cade cow of course they're going to sell him though i'm sure at some point yeah and i'm not sure um you know where they come from here down <laughs> really Certainly. quickly. Uh, Almeida's uh, going to be leaving. They have the whole time. Food. Yeah, yeah Al- Almeida is going to be leaving. Yes. Probably we're going to have. They're going to have some time to um, really sort that out. They, 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 I, I will say this too. Um, they have time to kind of like resurface. Like you know what I mean. Like come back to the top. Get rid of Almeida because like I think that's just a disaster. Showfeast is going to leave. Like I, I think it didn't work. Got, you've got a perfect chance to hit the reset and do it in a way because they've got nice pieces around. Like they've got these guys like, uh, you know, like Christian Espinosa, they've got guys like Cade Cal. I know he might not be there much longer. I think he's definitely going to play a couple more years in MLS. I'm not sure he's quite ready. He's just so young. Um, maybe in two years, because I think he's on the same trajectory that Paxton will be on. So two or three years and then he'll be gone. But I, I, I do, I think that, Right now, hit the reset, and if you're going to say Cape Cow, if you're going to sell him, sell him at his highest value in the market because I think that using that money to infuse it. Otherwise, Jordan, this team's going to be in a long run of wooden spoon contention. Talk about a team that was in wooden spoon contention. Houston Dynamo let go of Todd Ramos. Hmm. Uh, they part ways with him after – this makes sense. New owner, yeah. new GM. They want their guy. And Todd Ramos, uh, I saw a lot of people really being shocked about this and saying that he should go back to the U.S. under 20. I don't think Ramos is that great. I don't think Todd Ramos is that great. And uh, it hasn't worked anywhere he's been right now. And when he was at the U.S., uh, he did the under 23s Olympic run at one point. We failed then. You know, it's just I I don't know why everybody's so high on him. He was a good player back in the day, but, you know, that doesn't always – translate to these type of things and uh i'm not shocked are you shocked at all here um i mean it's been two years roughly because of the covid season and everything um yeah maybe not enough time but I, once but you with have the dynamo new, they were never going to do anything and once you have a new owner and a new gm it's very hard to mm-hmm. stick around because because yeah, you're part of the old system yeah uh i say I say he's favorite to get the job in San Jose. If Almeida leaves. Because I actually think that that would be interesting. He or Lucci, because Lucci does well with developmental young players. Because I know the U.S. men's national team, the 20-year-olds, they were looking at him. Um, So that would be interesting to see if if that would be a possible move. Or (laughs) he always got the the matter of, uh, gosh, who is it? I'm blanking on the name now. Who's the assistant coach who coached the 23? Uh, Christ. Oh, thank you, Jason. Um, could you imagine if he got the coaching gig? Maybe. <laughs> but I don't know, Jordan. Like you said, I think that the managerial pools are pretty shallow right now across the world, uh, just like every other employment um, situation. But, yeah, I'm going to throw a tab in there. As uh, I'm going to say he's going to be an interest of people because I do think he's a good coach. I just don't think it's panned out where he's been. Yeah, so we'll have to see if if Logan's right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Was there any other news that we want to talk about before we wrap it up here? We're gonna get ready to shift over to U.S. Men's National Team mm-hmm. stuff. Um, oh, Earthquakes did remove the interim tag of General Manager from Chris Leach uh, mm-hmm. or Leach. He is the 
a full on general manager. Are they? They're the ones using that consulting group, right? Yes. No, oh, dear. A Lord. few teams are. Yeah. God. That's a part of the other problem. Uh, just the fact that like you're going to have this collection of people trying to make decisions about a team that is in disarray. Yeah, we'll have to see how that. Uh... Yeah, I mean, of course, he's been with the team since 2009 in various other roles. So he was a player, he was a coach, technical director, and is now um, going to be the GM. So I, I do think this is. Yeah, at least he knows the league. He knows the team. He's been around. It's not like your random hire that happens with mm -hmm. some of these firms. So um, we'll see uh, how it goes. But, uh, okay, I think we're ready to move over to the U.S. men's national team. And we'll talk more about these playoff matches as we get, um, at, you know, after the U.S. games, um, which will be – what, around the 15th or so that we'll be able to start talking some of these playoff matchups? Yeah. You ready for this? Let's do it. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the roster for the Cincinnati game against uh, Mexico. So we have three goalkeepers, Sean Johnson, Zach Steffen, Matt Turner. We have Reggie Cannon as a defender, Mark McKenzie, Chris Richards, Anthony Robinson, Miles Robinson, Joe Scally getting his first call up, Sam Vines, DeAndre Yedlin, Walker Zimmerman. Midfielders, we're getting Kellen Acosta, Tyler Adams, Gia Luca, uh, Jean-Luca Busio, uh, Sebastian Legette, Weston McKenney, Eunice Musa, Christian Roldan, and forwards, Brendan Aronson, Paul Ariola, Jesus Freira, Ricardo Pepe, Christian Pulisic, Tim Weah. What do you think? We're in second place as we go into the matches. We're going to be playing against a tough Mexico team. Uh, what are your thoughts here on the uh, on the lineup coming in, squad? Really going to miss Serginio Dest because he had his best window last window. Um, enough so that he he's the reason why we're in good shape. Um, that's really going to suck. But that being said, Jordan, I am really pumped to see uh, one, Joe Scally play because he's just been an absolute monster this year and a, a merge, emerging star um, with Bereshi uh, Mooch and Godbach. So I think that, and there's been a ton written about him and how he's been left out. Um, and John Anthony Brooks, Brooks, you know, coming out and saying and being honest, saying that that he's really just not deserving of the spot because of how well these guys have been playing. I mean, it really does go to show just how good I think our summer young depth is. Joe's 21 or no, 19. Um, so his ability to play, Sam Fines will be an interesting watch to play. Um, so I think that those two, I, I think Anthony Robinson played well. Um, Reggie Cannon's played pretty well uh, when played. So Miles Robinson getting a goal here uh, in decision day. But um, I'm looking forward to that. And I'm also looking forward to the one that really kind of shocked me was the um, Ferreira selection. Because mm -hmm. um, I know he has been pretty good too in a recent stretch. Um, so that, that was another one. I was like, all right, I can see that. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to as far as rosters concerned. Um, anybody stands out to you that you're excited to see? I know one in particular excited to see based on your club and your <laughs> interest well, in the U S men's national team. <laughs> I am really interested in Scally just because yeah. I feel like the U S men's national team fans have been, uh, really hyping up Scally. Um, so hopefully he can, you can do well, you know, Brendan Aronson, of course, as always. Mm -hmm. um, I am excited for Fiera, though, just because, uh, you know, he's been scoring more. I saw some people say they'd rather have Sargent in than Jesus Ferreira. Mm -hmm. Sargent just hasn't done anything this year. He's yeah. had like seven shots all year, and it's, you know, not – I know he plays for a bad team, but, you know, sometimes you need players that are in form, and Jesus Ferreira has been in form recently because that's going to help carry over into the – uh into the international I think you know he's going to be a little bit more confident compared to Sargent um, with yeah. Norwich just being awful and now Norwich is going through a manager change that you wonder how that's going to affect Josh Sargent over there too I like leaving him out just because I think what you said I mean it's just not been good um, 
and I know his team's not good, but it, it's just really not been good for Josh Argent. And it's really a shame because I think he had such promise going in. I, there's just been, you know, you have some of these players sometimes, Jordan, where they just, they just never get the confidence. Um, and it ultimately just destroys them. And I think that that's what you kind of see here is this idea where he was confident coming in and, and they kind of hyped him up as being maybe one of those futuristic kind of strikers that'll get on the end of balls and play and goals and get goals for the United States, but it's just never panned out for him. So you're really starting to see, and especially with the emergence of uh, Ricardo Pepe and the way Tim Way has played, I mean, you really are starting to see him kind of fade. Um, and with some of these other strikers coming up and some of these players that are coming up in the attack, you're going to see some of these other names start to fade too. So USA sits second place, three points back of Mexico. So a win here would put them level with Mexico. Uh, maybe just not level on like goal differential, but uh, mm -hmm. they'll be level with uh, points if they can beat Mexico. If not, then, you know, not much might change here, but Canada faces uh, Costa Rica next and they're in third. Canada is Panama in fourth. They face Honduras next. Jamaica in sixth. They'll face El Salvador next. Um, and Hon uh, Honduras facing Panama, like I said, and Honduras is in eighth. Uh, then the next set of games, USA is going to face Jamaica. So uh, that one will be on the road and without any fans in the stands, right? Yeah. And Mexico supposedly has a ban on fans. Yeah. So we'll see how that affects uh, the CONCACAF World Cup qualifying octo you know octagon here see how that how that goes um geez anything else we need to talk about with uh mls or u.s men's i i guess what uh how many matches left do we play we play is it 14 in the octagon yeah 14 in the in the octagon 14 we're three up on panama I don't know. I like our chances right now. Uh, again, I think December and January, or sorry, November and January are big windows. After January, I think we'll really see how we stand. Yeah. As far as it's concerned. And what's you the last really window? March? Mm, yeah. March 20, or yeah, March 24th, 27th, and 30th. And it's a really tough window. It's Mexico, Panama, and Costa Rica. Because by the yeah, time you so, hit January, you've got six matches left. So here's how it'll work. By the time we record next time, we'll talk USA-Mexico. Then we'll look ahead to the Tuesday game of Jamaica-USA. Then we will talk about... The next time we'll talk Jamaica-USA and look ahead to MLS playoffs. January 26th. Seventh, we have versus El Salvador. January thirtieth, we have against Canada. Then February second, we have Honduras. March twenty fourth, we have Mexico. March twenty seventh, we have Panama, and March thirtieth, Costa Rica. So we'll know soon <laughs> if we're qualified or not. That's scary. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Like by the end of this window, like next. Next week, next Tuesday, after you know, next Wednesday, we'll know, we'll know a lot. <laughs> like mm -hmm. there could be some big separation. We really, I mean, I guess that you're at the point now where you're really hoping just Panama lose. Yeah, like they've got Honduras and they've got El Salvador, so I don't know if that'll happen um, because the the game against Honduras is in. Let's see where is this? this is Honduras. So that game's in Honduras, but Honduras is not good. Um, they're the last in the table. And then they go home. So I don't know if they'll drop points here, but if they do, that could be huge. But I don't think until January we'll really know. We can't drop any points. Not in this window. I feel like we've got to beat Mexico. I think a draw with Mexico is fine. Do you think so? Yeah. Yeah. And I think actually you're probably going to lose against Mexico. And that's fine. You always say that. <laughs> yeah. Always, we played him so much. And then, 
it's funny because like I'm I obviously I, I've watched it but not close enough like Jordan has so every time I've watched the U.S. play Mexico it's gone well <laughs> it's gone very well good luck Whereas, where you've watched it you've been like oh my god <laughs> but a lot of those like person. haven't been even like good wins like the, the, yeah. you know we we usually struggle um so look I, I'll totally take it if if we can if we can beat them but. I think you can lose at home to Mexico and still qualify for the for the World Cup. Right. That'd be their what first, second loss, first loss. Mm-hmm. We're undefeated, right? Or did we lose a game? Uh, we lost a game. Oh. We lost. Um, it was it? Was oh yeah, we lost to uh, on the road, right? Yeah. Uh, Panama or El Salvador. El Salvador. Uh, Panama. Right, Panama beat us. Yeah, Panama beat us one nothing. One nothing at their place. Not good. But Canada has a tough window too. They got to play Mexico as well. So if Canada and Panama drop points and we gain some points on people, I feel a lot better. Yeah, we got to beat Jamaica. Got to beat yeah. Jamaica. Draw against Mexico, and you got another four points, and you're looking pretty good going into the next window. This window only has two games, so you, you know, we kind of got lucky with the game against Mexico only having two games, like the window with Mexico only having two mm-hmm. games. And the next window is not till the end of January. They're going to do some friendlies in December, it sounds like. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Bosnia versus Herzegovina in like mid December. All right. So, uh, geez. Um, what's your prediction here then? They beat Mexico or they, or they don't? That's the only game we have to preview. Um, here. yeah, I think, <laughs> I think they'll beat Mexico. I think we stack up really well against them. I think the first time really, as I've understood, you know, going back and looking and having them talk about U.S. men's national team, I think that there's just something where we, we defend pretty well as far as, uh, you know, some of the other teams are concerned. I think that we play better defensively. Um, we've only allowed four goals um, in the qualifying. And I think, too, our, our, our attack's finally starting to come together. I think we're starting to piece together some stability, which you and I talked about a ton. I mean, you you know, having Yunus Musa, having McKinney, having Pulisic, having, you know, not Gio Reyna now, but having Gio Reyna normally um, – and then Ricardo Pepe's really stepped in that role. And Brennan Aronson's become a staple. So I think having those guys starting to figure it out, I think, and, and Greg will have to play them in this short window. I think there's not like that game. Like, you know how he had that game in between where he had, a, that's what, when we lost to Panama, where he had kind of like that lull. Yeah. Um, I don't, you don't have that with a two game window. So it's very bam, bam, play them. <laughs> so I think you'll see the most consistency in Greg's lineup in this window. As long as that game, that game's 9 10 p.m. on Friday, November 12th on ESPN. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's what MLS website says. ESPN just told me ESPN too. So I guess you trust ESPN more, right? So I'd say ESPN yeah. two is probably where that's going to be. And I'm pretty sure that's what it said before because people were freaking out that ESPN2 was carrying the game instead of ESPN1. You do mm-hmm. know they're in the same amount of households, right? Yeah. Like for everybody freaking out. If you have ESPN, you have ESPN2. It's not like the yeah. older days where they're one or the other. It's not like this is on FS2, which people right. don't usually have. I get it. It's a big game. You'd want it on ESPN, but they probably have something else that is going to get better ratings. And just the fact it's on ESPN2 is good enough for me. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but for some editing magic here, if you're listening to the show or if you're live, the West Coast games are going to start. I know on the podcast we already talked about the West Coast games, so you're probably confused. But uh, we're going to head out of here. Where, uh, where you can follow us, if I can talk, is on Twitter at Stateside Show, Instagram at Stateside Show, Facebook.com slash Stateside Show, or email us Stateside Show at gmail.com. And uh, we'll uh, talk all about Mexico versus U.S. men's national team on 
the next episode and we'll look ahead to the Jamaica game. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your week. And thanks for joining us.